Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're talking about recursion. Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're talking about recursion. Hi, I'm Dave, and I think you get the idea. If you Google recursion, they put in a nice Easter egg because it says, did you mean recursion? And of course you click on that and it just Googles recursion again, which is essentially what is happening. It's repeating the same process. If we look at the definition over here on the right under recursion, it says in computer science, recursion is a method of solving a problem where the solution depends on solutions to smaller instances of the same problem. Let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code and explore this concept. Okay, I have Visual Studio Code open. On the right, I have the console from DevTools in Chrome so we can see some output. And once again, I have the official definition of recursion here. And then I found an unofficial definition I would like to share. And this unofficial definition of recursion says any situation where you do something and then depending on the results, you might do it again. That made a lot of sense to me. And then in programming, recursion occurs when a function calls itself. And any iterator function, in other words, a function with a loop, can be recursive instead of being an iterator function. So let's start by taking a look at that. Just a quick note before we get started, if you are already familiar with recursion and the recursive concept, I have bookmarked the chapters of the video below in the description so you can jump ahead to those real life examples that I will provide. But I want to cover the concept of recursion just a little for those that are not familiar with it first. And so we'll start out with an iterator function and I'm going to just paste it in. It's a simple function that counts to 10. It accepts a parameter and if none is provided, the parameter starts out at one. It has a while loop and while the uh, parameter is less than 10 or less than or equal to 10, it will log the number to the console and then increment that parameter. And we can go ahead and save this and see the result in the console and it counts one to 10. Now we can provide this same result with recursion. And let's think about recursion and what it means for a second because recursive functions have two parts. The recursive call to the function, which means it calls itself, and then at least one condition to exit, which we also need a condition to exit in a loop or we would get an endless loop. So I'll go ahead and comment out this function call, scroll up for a little bit of room, and then I'm going to paste in the recursive version of this function and we'll call this recur to 10. And you can see here it accepts the same parameter. And then here is the reason to exit. If number is greater than 10, just simply return and that exits. We log to the console, we increment the number, but instead of a loop, the function just calls itself, which is recursion. So now I'll go ahead and save this. And you can see we get the same result. It just has a different line that it was executed on. Now, as we learn about recursion, there are some things to keep in mind. And I've got the quote, with great power comes great responsibility, which I'm sure you have heard before, but reasons to use and not abuse recursion. Recursion creates less code. It should be a little more elegant, pleasing to look at, and it should have increased readability. So there are also reasons to not use recursion that we should look at, and I'll put those right below it. And that includes performance. The loop in JavaScript and in other languages is usually more performant than calling another function. So you use more memory when you call functions and calling a loop is just more optimized for performance. Um, possibly more difficult to debug. So recursion or recursive functions um, follow logic that could be a little hard to follow or wrap your head around if you're not used to them. And then you have to ask yourself, is the readability improved? Because yes, it might be and easily could be, but is it really? And so you want to look at that and think, I'm writing code for the person that follows me and will they understand my code? Is it readable? From there, I'm going to bring up an example that is often used with recursion, and that is the Fibonacci sequence. So let's look at this quickly. The Fibonacci sequence, 
essentially is a sequence of numbers where the previous two create the next one. So 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and I think you get the idea. So I'm going to put in a function here that does not use recursion, but it will return the Fibonacci sequence in at least as many numbers as we request. So the parameter put in here, the num, is how many numbers of the sequence we want returned. And then we start with an array that has the first two numbers of the sequence by default, 0 and 1. So let's look at this function. It uses a loop instead of recursion. And it says while the number, the parameter number we pass in is greater than 2, because we've already got the first two here, we want to slice the last two of the array. And we define those here by breaking them out with const. So we have next to last and last. We add those together and push them into the array for the next number. And then we subtract 1 from the number and the loop continues while it is greater than 2. And eventually, when it's not greater than 2, we return the array. So let's return the first 12 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. Now let me wrap this in a console log statement or we can't see it. And I also want to comment that out the other console log statement or that will continue to push our results down. There we go. And with the console log statement, let's look at those numbers. And here it is, 0, 1, another 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and 89. But now let's look at the same function if we use recursion. And with recursion, it doesn't take up as much space, so we do have fewer lines of code, and some of it looks much the same. We do have our reason to exit, so if the number is less than or equal to 2, we just return the array. This line of code is exactly the same, where we slice the last two values of the array, but notice the return line. We call fib, which is what I named the function, and here is where we have the number minus 1 of the parameter, and then we just use the spread operator to pass in the array, and we add another number to the array by adding next to last and last together. So I'll once again need to wrap this in a console log statement. And then we can log this to the console as well and see the result. And you see we get the exact same result. Scrolling up, let's look at one other problem that uses the Fibonacci sequence that is a very common question and that is to return whatever the nth position or requested position of the Fibonacci sequence. What number is in this position is what we would be saying. So the parameter we pass in is what is in the sixth position. And remember, we start counting from zero. Actually, I'm passing in what is in the eighth position here. So if I save this, we just get the one number back, 21. And this is without recursion. What this is doing is if the number is less than or equal to one, it just returns the position passed in because the first numbers are 0 and 1 in the sequence. And we have those right here as well. And then we start a loop, once again, starting at the number 2. We once again slice the end of the array, and we add those together as we push it to the array. But then instead of returning the entire array at the end, we just return the one number from the array that is in the position that is requested. And now I'll introduce the version with recursion. And we can see it is much smaller. Let's break this down. This function has a position parameter just like the previous function, and it has a reason to exit. If the position is less than two, it returns the position. But then the return statement calls the function not once, but twice. It has position minus one passed in and position minus two passed in. So let's see if this provides the same result that we got from the previous much larger function. And yes, it does. So this is a great example of recursion, not once, but twice in the return statement. And before we finish, remembering why we want to use recursion and why we might not want to use recursion, let's look at another example of the same function. It can be written as one line, and of course it is wrapping there because it's a little longer than I have the window open for, but this is a one line function that is the same as this previous function. It accepts the position, it has a ternary statement instead of an if statement, 
and it essentially says, if it is less than two, return the position, but if it is not, then it returns our recursive calls that are added together. Fib position with position minus one as a parameter, and then the second call with position minus two as a parameter. And so let's go ahead and save this, and you'll see we get the same result. Now what we wanna ask ourselves is, is this more readable? Is this elegant code? And some would say yes. I, I believe it's very opinionated here. I would not write a function this way because I am typically teaching beginners and that makes me very deliberate when I code and try to show things step by step. And I believe a one line function with a ternary statement that uses recursion is very difficult to understand as you're starting out. But that's not to say this is wrong or bad. It is just not something I would use considering who I usually work with and the readability. Now, you would have to consider this for who you work with. Who are you writing code for? And you, are you confident that everyone that would be reading your code would understand what this function would do? Now that we've discussed the concept of recursion and looked at some examples to help you understand that concept, let's look at some real life examples. And the first one that I want to share that I really didn't find when I was looking for examples, but I've had to do this at work myself, and that is with a continuation token from an API. So you request data from an API and it returns you a set amount of results, but it tells you there are more. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of pseudocode here. I won't write out the full function, but I will show you an example of what I have had to do with an AWS S3 bucket when I was retrieving product images. So this is kind of a generic function name, but it says get AWS product ID images, and it's an async function. So here I'm not writing the code for what would have happened at first. I just say I'm getting the data with an await fetch request. I do have a tutorial on using async, await, and fetch, and I'll link to that above right now if you're not familiar with that, but I'm not writing this code out. It's just a little pseudocode saying this is what I was doing. So uh, I've got a comment saying I've requested the data, but when I get the data back, now this is actual uh, code that I would use with AWS, and I've got the data, and it has a field called is truncated, and that means did I get all the data or not? It's a Boolean field, so I'm just saying if that is true, because it is usually false, but if there's more data, it's true, and I know I need to go ahead and grab the rest of the data that my first request did not receive in the response. So here I have a recursive await call to the same function, and here I'm requesting the rest of those images, and there could be another continuation token. So as long as there is a continuation token, as long as the data says that it is truncated, I'm going to make this call again. And you can see I pass in the product ID. This S3 variable is my connection to S3. I've got a result array that I'm accumulating the results in. In this case, it would be product images. And then I've also got the continuation token that I must pass to get the next set of results from AWS. So this is a very practical real life example of using recursion as the API doesn't give you all the data but it tells you there's more and then you have to send the correct token to get the rest of that data. Okay, let's look at another real life example. And in this example, Let's say it's a parser, maybe a company email directory, maybe a file directory, maybe you're parsing the DOM with, you, maybe you've written a web crawler in Node, that's kind of cool, or maybe an XML or JSON data export. And that's what we're going to look at is an example JSON data export. So I will paste this in and let's imagine you have exported this data from your streaming music library and it has provided you the artists by genre. And you can see it's a large object. It's essentially JSON data here. And then you've got some jazz artists and all the artist names are in an array. And here we've got rock, but then there are subcategories of rock. We've got classic rock, hair rock, 
alt rock and then alt rock has two of its own subcategories classic and current and then there are some that are just unclassified but underneath unclassified there are new and classic categories as well depending on when the music was released so there's just several different artists listed here i believe i've got about 16 artists total in here and you want to write a function that will just retrieve all of the artist names and it has these subdirectories but you never know there might not be a subdirectory at all or there may be or there may be a couple and so a recursive function handles this well now that you've had a good look at the data i'm going to have to scroll it off the screen just a little and fit our function on here but let's look at this get artist names function and i pass in the data object which would be the data we've had up here the artist by genre data object and then by default we pass in an array and the default value is an empty array if uh, we don't pass one in then we use object.keys and then the object that we passed in we can call for each at that point so yes you can call for each inside of a recursive function as well you could have another loop or it doesn't have to be a for each loop but it is permissible to use both at the same time uh, inside this for each loop and we're looking at each key of the array here we can say or of the object we can say if this is an array once we get to the certain uh, value that we have passed in we use data object and then in bracket we use the keys so we can actually refer to the value if the value is an array then we're going to call each on that array for each and for each artist we'll push it into the array that we're going to eventually pass in here with recursion so our r is our array here and we push in the artist and then after we've done that for that particular uh, area or particular genre then we just call get artist names again but instead of passing in the full object we just pass it in with that specific key so we're passing in a smaller version of the object now remember what the official definition was breaking a problem down into smaller problems and we're essentially calling the same function again and then we have the array we pass in because we want to go ahead and keep the artist we've already pushed into the array eventually when it works its way through all the categories we return the full array right here and I can call get artist names and pass in artists by genre which is the name of our data object here and we'll go ahead and see what we get in the console and it looks like I need to give us just a little bit more room to read all of those artists but we have 16 artists and you can see we pulled those all from that object now I will come back to Visual Studio Code and I'll have this function so I'm going to put all of these in a repository that is linked to below so follow the github link if you want the source code and if you're new to working with recursion go ahead and look up some other examples as well you'll definitely find the Fibonacci examples there's factorials and several different common examples but I wanted to give some real world examples and working your way or parsing data is definitely a real world example and then again I had not seen another article or any other place that discussed recursion with an API call but uh, it's definitely something I've personally done at my job and I think is a very practical example of a real life uh, instance you would need recursion hey thank you guys so much for watching liking and subscribing i appreciate it i look forward to it every week and i will talk to you again very soon